the moment we're in Tala Village at Catherine Sapone's office, we're after marching down for Chamber House. Um, we've been at the primary care centre, we've been at Lichina. It's to highlight the lack of services for children with um, autism, ADHD, um, even bigger than that, any child that's left waiting on services in this country shouldn't be happening. I had to do a posters last night of people who are waiting for 38 months, 36 months, 24. The numbers are huge. These kids are just waiting for services like OT, uh, speech and language, that type of thing. They shouldn't be waiting this long at all. I'm here today because my son is awaiting community services for a year and a half. Um, due to boundary lines and lack of services, he has no community services, which impacts on his social, emotional and whole body. He has, <laughs> he has no speech and language, he's non-verbal, and he has absolutely no services. He needs a multidisciplinary team. I'm here today to support my son, Paul, today. Uh, so you have practically zero services um, since his diagnosis of autism. He's currently on the waiting list. Um, he's in position 45, but that number means absolutely nothing. I'm here because I have two special needs sons. Paul is 11 and he's three years waiting on services, and Tyg is four and he's two years waiting on services. We haven't received any. It's been a constant battle. It's a constant fight trying to get the services trying to get any assessments done. It's just a constant battle and it's not acceptable. Our children are falling through the net and they're struggling in the long term. Well, as they say, early intervention is so important. And if Isaac doesn't have any intervention, he's left at the moment with no social mm -hmm. skills. He has no friends. He has no day except for a home with me at the moment. Um, and hospital appointments. So if he's not in a hospital bed, he's least go home. He has nobody to do OT, nobody to do physio, nobody to do speech and language. He's uh, tube fed and he could really benefit from speech language for a verbal point of view, but also for his swallow. Last year, Carl was hospitalised. He had a chronic vomiting bug. But due to his sensory issues, he stopped eating for 24 days. He was hospitalised for on and off for to six weeks. We ended up having to get an NG tube fit just to maintain his nutrition. We contacted the chamber house. And we were just told he's on a waiting list. He won't be prioritised. There's nothing left to do. It's the hospital's job. But it wasn't the hospital's job. Government's job to provide services in the community for these children. Um, we're here to represent the Teleparents Autism Support Group. Um, we hear from um, hundreds of parents, both on our Facebook group and by email, um, just the difficulties they're having regarding uh, receiving services. And seeing their children struggle with everyday tasks that if they had, say, physiotherapy or they had their OT or the speech and language, they, if they had that input, they would manage it better and they'd start coping mechanisms and skills would be a lot easier, but because nothing has been provided, every day is a struggle from morning to bedtime. Well, both of us have um, children on the spectrum. Um, I have a child who I have to go and pay privately for in assessments because the waiting list for so long. Um, there's literally been no assessment officer for the last year in Chamber House, so I have to go and pay €1,800 Euro to have my child assessed. We've arrived at Catrice O'Connor's office, she's not here. But Claire has taken in the petition with over 7,000 signatures on it on her behalf. Um, Catherine Sapone has organised a public meeting. You need to contact Catherine Sapone's office and give them your email addresses or your phone numbers so she can confirm with you where the meeting is. The location is not set yet because she's unsure of numbers. So let's give her lots of numbers. <laughs> enough is enough! Enough is enough! Enough is enough! It used to be a move with these intervention services. I, hand in my heart, would love to see today where a family is in the position I'm in. I have three children on the spectrum. Not one of them is getting any type of service. I would love for the next family who ends up in my position to be told, okay, your child has this. Here's your appointments. Here's your services. Here's how we're going to help you. Not that we're going to hand you a piece of paper, shatter your world, and then do nothing about it.